So around April 2019, I decided to build a T3 um, from Knights of the Old Republic. And anyone who's part of the T3 Builders Group on Facebook will be seeing my progress. So it's now August 2021, so two years on, and this is where I am now. So I'll show you a bit of sort of what I've learned, what mistakes I've made, and a quick update on every single part. Here is a basic body. You can see the low profile bolts here. These are connecting to various aluminium 2040, 2020 sections to hold the frame together. It's very strong and it's not going to go anywhere. I think I may have over-engineered, or I definitely know I've over-engineered some of it. So here is the top Lazy Susan that turns the neck mechanism. You've got a motor here and you can see, yeah, there's not much little leeway here for the main top axle. There's a temporary wooden pivot, which I'll explain in a moment. The outer frame of T3 is two CNC'd nine millimeter thick panels. And again, this is where I've made another mistake. So on the right hand side, here um, I've messed the hole up so the actual skins don't fit on. So I've had to cut those so they're actually, yeah, properly like this. So I need to go back and yeah, see and see some new inner skins so they fit properly. So when I say inner skins, I mean the plywood skins, not the outer styrene skins. And while it's on a bench, it's easier to sort of see what's happening. So I have two Lazy Susan bearings for the axles, one at the back, one at the top here. These have 3D printed inserts to hold the central 4080 bit of alley at the top and one for the yeah, sort of back where the motors go. And it, you have an outer 3D print here and these sort of clamp together and hold, hopefully hold the bit of alley so it won't move. The actuator um, is connected to a bit of 4040. And again, you can see over engineering here with um, aluminum L brackets. The actuator pushes on this arm and that in turn turns this, yeah, 4080, which will sort of turn the legs back and forward. And that will hopefully allow T3 to, yeah, tilt up and down as it does in the game. This is a rear axle and drive system for T3. It hasn't got the skins on yet. Um, these will be 3D printed and attached as sort of a single bit. So I'm going to print out sections that go here, here, here and here. They will just sort of screw onto the end and look like the outer feet. The drive system is almost identical to what I use in my Astromex. So 268kV brushless motor going for a Bainbot 16 to 1 gearbox going to Vex Pro uh, 4 inch Omni and a 5 inch Colson caster. Um, with gearing so they go the same speed. So it has loads of power and um, for anyone that's seen, you can see me sort of driving around on this. It's four wheel drive and because it's got the Omni, it turns on the spots. Here is one of the side panels of T3. It consists of two layers of two millimeter styrene, a outer layer, which is etched so I can see panels and an inner layer. Um, I've got a recessed area here with a sort of, I'll say spring type arrangement that will look good with the bottom axle. Then I've got the sort of top axle will go here to the main legs. I have resin printed details for the top sort of pockets and for these little vents so that looks good. The spring area here at the moment it is a 
yeah, FDM printed detail, but I may upgrade that to resin, partly due to the sanding involved. The back of the skins show the recessed panel I was talking about earlier, and these sort of recessed holes. I've done these mates with the low profile bolts that hold the frame together. I've also drilled some small holes every now and again and I will put self tappers in these which hold the skins to the frame so the skins can be removed if needed. This is the lower rear panel of sort of T3. It goes at the very back of T3 at the bottom. Um, I may have put a bit too much detail on here. You can see I've got multiple CNC, multiple layers of styrene and laminated together to get this detail. Um, in retrospect, this was a lot of work and 3D prints may have been quicker, although then I'd have to do sort of sand it and sort of, yeah, prime and sand and prime and sand as people know with 3D printing. Again, this will bolt or screw to the frame and you can see where I've put little holes to screw through. Access to T3's electronics and all the internal gubbins will be via the back panel. So again, I've got CNC'd styrene, just laminated together two sheets, uh, two millimeter outer, three millimeter inner for strength. Then I've made a box in the center and put 3D printed sort of back detail in. So yeah, again, it's lots of sanding, lots of primering and repeats. I've also put some holes here. And this is partly so when the back panel is in place, I can use this to take it out. Um, I have have put, yeah, drilled holes here, so I can put screws in if needed. Um, but I think that might be a bit too much, but time will tell. What you see here is the first attempt at the sort of neck mechanism. Because the neck uses a, or I'm trying to do a pan and tilt, so the head wobbles. I have two 20 kilogram servos here. One does sort of like left and right, and this one here goes up to an arm here. This used a piece of plastic pipe with 3D printing details. This was just a test and it proved it did work, although there is some inherent wobble because of a backlash with gears and the weight of a head, so it wants to carry on the momentum. After having a look, Crane, with his T7 builds, he suggested a sort of flat pack type arrangement, or sort of 3D print. So this is the Mark II, and this is where I am now. It's got the same left and right, and then up and down arrangement. And this is the top panel, which the head bolts onto. Again, you can see just here, there is a bit of wobble, just because of all the sort of slop in it. Crane has since moved to small linear actuators, and it looks like a better solution, but it is sort of more expensive. And you can see here, the wires are routed through to the bottom. In a final design, there will be a mount for an ESP32 and MPU6050 for the IMU. So it can actually detect the tilt of the bottom plates and then it will auto level the top plates. So as a body tilts the head or rotates, the top plate will always stay level. So the head yeah, isn't wobbling around with the body itself. The internal mechanism of a neck, as we've just seen, sort of rotates and pan and tilts. And this sits inside the actual, yeah, 3D printed neck assembly. However, in the game you see this is actually static. So first of all, I printed this and you can see, yeah, sort of multiple panels sort of glued together. Um, this was the first mistake. So when I printed the top of the body panel, I put this on and there's a remarkable difference between dimensions here and here between the CNC and 3D printed um, and this is yeah where I neglected to think about 3D print shrinkage so 
on bigger parts my printer needs to be adjusted for 1.006 um, or 100.6 percent in order to scale it up and yeah fit properly so that's the mark one in this so I've moved over to mark two and this fits the outer panel almost perfectly then i plan to do the outer neck in two sections one here one here joined by magnets you can see we put magnet holes so that all went together perfectly however in fusion my neck files are in a different yeah file itself to the body files and I was doing the neck and mechanism different things so what I found out is you can just about see here and um, there's interference when the neck turns so yeah back to square one and that's yeah four times I think nine hours of printing out of a window so on to square on to step three or mark three so the current plan is to have a fixed front and this will permanently be glued on then this will be removable um, so I can get to the neck inside so let's put the neck in so so the neck will go there And all the tolerances are quite tight because of the space. And you can see this will go down and it just about misses, he says. Um, and then, yep, this will be magnetized and it will go on like that and just slot in. In theory, that's the plan anyway. This is an example of yet more over engineering by uh, myself. I spent quite a while on the head because, like R2D2, or Astromex, the head is what makes it. I built a initial wooden frame as a test and it worked from there. I built a semi like egg crate type internal frame. And then this is skinned in two layers of one millimeter sort of styrene. It'll do as a start. Um, hopefully it'll work here. I have 3D printed lights at the front. Again, I put too many wall thicknesses. So this is sort of too heavy and too much infill. I need to reprint this sort of lighter. Currently, the head is too front heavy. The plan is to have a battery in the back and that will offset the weight. But what you need with the T3 head is almost like a neutral buoyancy. So under no load, the head will just sit level. There'll be no load on the servos. There'll only be load on the servos when I do panel tilts. At other times there'll be no load, so it's not gonna draw any current, or hopefully less current. And here's a plate here that connects to the top of the neck and it'll just bolt on. So if I want to remove a head, I can just undo the bolts head comes off. Talking about lights, I've got NeoPixels in all three of the main lights and the two side lights. These can put out quite a bit of heat. So I've put vent holes in the back here. There are vent holes in the smaller one, which are hard to see. And in the main lights, you can just see the vent holes here. If I turn the head round, you can see the NeoPixel rings here. Then I've got a bit of 3mm HDPE. This goes into a housing and just slides on. And then I'll just use a bit of E6000 glue just to hold it in place. And then it will be easily removable if needed. The front light itself has a few rings of the NeoPixels. Oh, I didn't like that. Um, underneath, um, I've got a 3D printed hexagon. This is seen in the game and this connects to 
yeah, sort of bottom of the head, as you can see one, and it'll help hide the neck ring to a certain extent. And you can see the plates here that connects to the top of the neck. At back of the head is the gun. Again, this took me a bit of time to work out. Um, Doug Olson did a great job job of his yeah what's it um, gun mechanism. So I stole a bit of that. So the actual mechanism itself has a servo driving a gear that has a parallelogram type arrangement i've got a lever here and a lever here and two hidden pivots here and you can just see them here so as the motor turns the gun stays level and then in the gun itself at the back i've got a small servo that allows it to do this sort of like nodding of a gun as you see in the game and then because i'm cheap and tacky i've just put a i think it's a eight millimeter led in the front and this will just flash red when it shoots and this just sits in the back of a head but it does it's there and then the gun will just pop up like this and pop down again as discussed in the t3 builders group there are some sort of like changes and differences between Knights of the Old Republic 3D Mesh and Galaxy of Heroes 3D Mesh. And especially uh, Knights of the Old Republic is now a very old game and it has low polygons. One of the things the game indicates is you have a sort of cut down there. So none of this area exists. And then, but with um, Galaxy of Heroes, it introduces this sort of curved bottom and the same the other side. I quite like this. Um, I prefer the look to it being square. I did do some tests and rendered them and I just, yeah, preferred this one. It is again, just personal preference. I spent ages trying to work out how to do the legs and the feet because this is one of the most complex parts. You have the top of a shoulder that connects to a sort of box here. And then you have four distinct bits here that connect to the bottom ankle. And it was very hard to work out how to do this. Um, I looked at steel beams and I also looked at alley beams, did deflection tests, putting weight on them. Eventually, I worked out that if I had two bits of material and clamped the alley together at both ends, it makes it incredibly rigid. And then it's so strong, you don't get any deflection. Or you get very minor deflection. For the feet, I looked at also how I can do them if I wanted a floating foot or an active foot so to explain with a act or active foot I'd have a wheel here and a wheel here and T3 would go along if it encountered a bump it would drive over it and so on but I'm a bit concerned that if I have wheels in the four front I'll say toes rather than feet four front toes um, it adds to the sort of rolling friction so when I do turn it might be a bit too much so what I worked out actually is if I can hide another Vex Omni in the ankle and it won't be seen and you'll see this in a moment this is the Mark II leg um, and it's progressed a bit from the Mark I but still uses the clamped aluminium sections so I have a 3D printed parts here here that clamp the top and the ankle here and here for two parts i've got a servo low profile servo here which drives this shot or vex hex shaft via gearing and then the think, six inch omni here and i've also got the middle leg i discussed earlier here and here you can see the very distinct four bars that I wanted to recreate. Here's the toe actually connected to the Vex Pro 
shaft as earlier and you can see the vex omni is pretty it was pretty hidden by the toe so hopefully this won't be seen too much in normal operation um, one of the benefits of this is the toes will also be able to tilt so as the body tilts and the IMU detects the angle this will auto level the toe and also it will allow me to do a toe waggle so just for a bit of animation I can say just do that every now and again and you'll just see the toes waggle which I think is quite a good yeah little addition one of the things I do want to improve on is the weight of these toes they are I'll say significant they don't need to be I'd say what's that, a few hundred grams so they don't need to be yeah structural they are just detail and also because they are at the front this section here will get damaged so I need to make these lighter and also to a certain extent so easily repairable so if they do get broken I can just chuck them put another one on this is the top of the T3 shoulder it's been 3d printed in sections and then stuck together to give you an idea of size it's about 10 and a half inches in diameter using my nice pink ruler the plan was initially to have it like this on the leg and then have magnets to put the outer cover on so I can get to it. thinking now is I will permanently put this and the actual shoulder together so when I take them off that will come off as well as one and then I can just yeah put that on there and it will have magnets to fix it I'm still undecided I know I have over engineered this this is to get far too heavy so I need to reprint it a lower in fill and less wall sections again it's something that if it gets damaged it gets damaged and I can just sort of replace it you can see the sort of like mixed media I'm using so obviously 3d printing here where it's be a nightmare to get these curves wood because it's easily available and strong and take a thread here I've got laminated styrene panels again and this is partly due to I could 3d print it but my Prus is only a 200 mil bed and whatever I do I'm going to have to fill and sand the top whereas if I can just make it out of styrene then it's just a bit of two and three mil styrene again laminated together form a box section and in the middle here there will be a 3d printed detail section that just drops in and a few magnets just to hold the yeah inner and outer together this is my normal transmitter of choice when it comes to astromex the spectrum dx6 so do forwards backwards left right and then dome turn and then if i do want any panels or something opening i can just assign a channel so i've got six channels so forwards backwards one two three and then so on so pretty easy we recommend or one of the recommended cheap transmitters is this a fly sky you can get two different versions the six channel and the upgraded one with 10 channels so with t3 you have a standard sort of forwards backwards left right dome turn but you also have pan and tilt on the head body up and down gun opening at the top and then potentially the utility arm so you need a lot more channels initially i thought this would do um, i've got variable ones here but it's going to be very hard to do sort of driving as well as sort of like turning the head at the same time so and i thought i might be able to get one of the rotation things in here but they are quite narrow and it just sort of wouldn't fit so i've had to go way overkill um, and hopefully this will work it's a 16 channel radio master that works with sort of anything it'll work with spectrum receivers fly sky receivers and so on um it's got a little sh shoulder resist or variable pots here um and lots of switches so hopefully between this pot here this pot here and standard ones here 
I should be able to get all of T3's yeah, movements on this. I did think about using a custom Arduino XB combination, but I know XB can have like transmission issues every now and again. Um, I don't want it to be going off, yeah, half assed at convention. So hopefully this will do the job. So this is my hodgepodge of parts all put together uh, inside my messy workshop, which I'm actually trying to tidy up at the moment. Yep, you can see it's almost there. Um, there are a lot of parts that need redoing. The shoulders, I've said again, yeah, need to be fixed. The feet or toes need to be lighter, but they look okay at the moment. The rear cladding, the foot needs doing, the 3D printed insert needs doing. The back itself looks pretty good and the panels will line up once they all together. The paint scheme itself is going to be very messy so it will hide a lot of the yeah sort of problems. I've still got the top panel to go on that will be held on by either just locating on these struts or by magnets. Not sure what to do. Um, because of the metal bits here, I can't get the head sort of tilting properly. And again, there is still quite a lot to do, even though I'm at two years in now. But hopefully that gives you enough of an update of where I am. And hopefully the next update I will have it sort of moving and a bit more yeah, active rather than just sitting in the corner of my messy workshop. Thanks all. Bye.